now let's start with question number one a very difficult gmat question which used to be the very last question in the og until i think 2016 edition or 2015 edition a very challenging question with close options let's summarize the facts first so the main thing out here is the requirement of a student teacher ratio in government funded schools cannot exceed a certain prescribed limit this is one of the conditions that we need to obey and the other thing that we are told is that the all the kids in the country are entitled to free education in these government schools so when a recession occurs and incomes fall and the enrollment increases here and therefore the conclusion is that while other employment opportunities might contract getting a teaching job is unlikely to be made more difficult even during a recession now this is an evaluate the argument question but before we move on to the question let's just summarize what we mean by this kind of mathematical angle to the data it's a ratio that we are talking about which essentially means that if we have students and we have teachers and let's say the ratio government prescribes is 10 to 1 it means for every 10 students you need at least one teacher so if you have 50 kids you will need minimum five teachers so this is the ratio by which the schools have to abide the argument is telling us that at the time of recession this number is going to shoot up because these are free schools they offer free education and during a recession parents are more likely to send their kids to these free schools hence in order to maintain the prescribed ratio the schools will need to recruit more teachers and um, because of that there will be job openings in this space and therefore the conclusion that while other jobs might not be easy to secure getting a teaching job will not be made more difficult we just need to evaluate this argument from a neutral perspective that whether the author is making a valid point or not so what else do we need to know in terms of information that is presented to us in the five options and we need to look at each one of them because that's the way we go about with evaluate questions and check whether if this information is available to us does it help us evaluate the given conclusion better or not now out of the five options the last two are easy to reject one of them is asking not asking us what proportion of the country's workers are holding jobs as teachers this is only telling us about the proportion it's not going to in any way tell us about the demand or so on because whatever fraction of the country's population holds jobs as a teacher that does not tell us whether getting future jobs will be made easier or more difficult so this is not going to help us much and option e is telling us is asking us whether in the past these schools were having a ratio in excess of the new limit again not a good option to look at because it's talking of the past and no matter what kind of ratio they were working with in the past as of today they have to obey this ratio so what happened before the law came into picture and the requirement came into picture is irrelevant to analyzing this argument so d and e are easy to reject it's a close call between a b and c which we need to now understand so let's go to these options one by one in option a we are asking the question whether in wagonia there are any other schools not funded by the government that offer these children free education now suppose the answer to this question is yes there are other schools that offer free education then chances are that parents might enroll their kids in such schools which are non-government schools and if that happens they don't have any limit to go by because the passage tells us that it applies only to government funded schools so if that happens there may not be a need to recruit any more teachers and the conclusion can be called into question on the other hand if the answer to this question is a no that in wagonia there are no other such schools that offer free education besides the government ones of course then it tells us that the author has a good point because all the crowd will come to the government funded schools and hence there will be a greater demand for teachers out there so it's a good option you cannot just reject it outright let's keep it for some time till we check the others and we'll have to come back to it and reject option b we are asking the question whether number of qualified applicants for teaching positions qualified applicants for the same job that we are talking about increases significantly during economic recessions again a very relevant question to ask because if the number of qualified applicants is increasing significantly 
then you will not only have a greater demand for teachers you could also have a greater supply of teachers and then in such circumstances getting a job might not become easier or it could even be made more difficult so that tells us in that direction and on the other hand if the answer to this question is a no that uh, the number of qualified applicants will not increase significantly then it tells us that okay there will be a greater demand for teachers by these schools but the uh, applicants are not going to shoot up much so whoever is applying has a better probability or better chance of getting a job now so again a very good question to ask and it is helping us very much evaluate the argument so again we have to keep this option also pending for now in option c we are asking what the current student teacher ratio in wagonia's government funded schools is again this question is very specific to the ratio itself which is the focal point of the whole question so you just can't afford to ignore such options it's asking us what is the current ratio now one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that suppose the ratio prescribed ratio is 10 to 1 but schools are operating at 8 to 1 which essentially means that schools have more teachers than they actually require the government is saying for every 10 kids you need one teacher but schools are offering one teacher for every eight kids let's say in that case we have a buffer of two children per teacher so if you have let's say 100 children according to the government you need 10 teachers but schools are offering more teachers let's say 12 or 13 teachers approximately to maintain such a ratio in which case the enrollment can easily go up to 120 to 130 without violating the given ratio so what it means is that if schools are having some kind of a gap or some kind of a buffer then they can easily absorb the additional intake without having to recruit more teachers in which case the author's argument can be called into question on the other hand if they are operating right at the borderline of 10 is to 1 then the moment you have extra students they will need extra teachers in which case the author uh, uh, has a good point to make that yes it will become easier to get a job perhaps so again this is a very good question to address out here and what we are seeing so far is that all these three options are on the face of it good options to look at now one of them obviously is right and the other two have to go let's understand which two will go and why the first option that can go is going to be option C. Now, why does option C go? Whatever we discuss right now is very much valid. And if all this is true, there might just not be a need for more teachers in spite of having more students. So this part of the analysis is correct. And maybe on another question, you should have given more thought to such things, but not here because of the wording of the option. The option is not asking us whether there is a buffer or not. The option is telling us what the ratio is. This is the specific question that we are seeking an answer to. Now, if you ask someone, tell me what is the ratio, that person will give you an absolute figure, not a relative figure, meaning the ratio is so much 10 is to 1, or 15 is to 1, or 5 is to 1, whatever, they'll give you that kind of an answer. They will not tell you whether they have a gap to fill, or whether they are at the borderline, or whether they have some kind of scope to recruit or to uh, enroll more kids or not so this is a wrong question to ask out here asking specifically what the ratio is will not help us we should have asked whether the ratio allows for more kids to be taken in without adding more teachers that would have been a better question not this one so c we have to reject the other option we'll reject is going to be a a we will reject because this is again a good question because if there are other schools offering free education as we discussed earlier, the kids can very well go there and there may not be a need for any teachers. But in the passage, if you read again carefully, it says when a recession occurs and average incomes fall, the number of children enrolled in government funded schools tends to increase. This is a fact given to us in the passage that when a recession occurs, the number of kids coming to government schools is going to increase. It does tend to increase. Hence, questioning whether there are other schools or not is not relevant anymore because the passage 
overrules it and tells us no even if there are other schools it doesn't matter government schools are going to get more students so in the absence of this information in the passage a would have been a great question to ask but because we have already been told that it happens this way we cannot defy the facts and say no it might not happen only that way we cannot go against the information given therefore a will go and b is the right question to ask because we are talking of the applicant pool so the competition for getting the same job and having some awareness as to whether there are more people wanting the same job or not is going to be a good question to ask in deciding whether it will be made easy or difficult okay so this is the answer to this one